Welcome back everyone, I'm Brick and this is the second episode of my Learning Meltiblood series. In this episode I'll take on the subjects of movement and the neutral game. Movement is a crucial part of the game, but a lot of beginners have trouble with it even if they have played other fighting games before. The difference is that in Melty Blood the options when you are in the air are more and better than a lot of other fighting games. This brings a lot of emphasis on the air when a big part of neutral is played. Of course, as we will see, being in the air is not without its risks. First, let's take a look at what your movement options are in this game. On the ground you will be able to walk or dash forward and back. All back dashes have some invincibility. There are two types of forward dashes. Run type dashes have a longer startup usually, but they can cover a bigger portion of the screen. Dash type dashes can cover short distances faster, but they have a limit to the distance they can cover. You can interrupt dashes at any moment and block or attack. You will conserve momentum this way. Runs can be interrupted, but don't let you conserve movement. As for air movement, you have a big array of options. Every character in the game can jump, air jump and air dash back or forward once. Like ground dashes, the speed and distance of air dashes greatly depends on the character and the moon. Another universal movement option are super jumps. All characters can execute a neutral super jump or a forward one by pressing down up or down up forward. There is no back super jump. Super jumps have a slower startup, but they cover a much bigger distance. The forward one in particular has a peculiar trajectory that lets you cover a lot of horizontal space in a very little time. Air jumps can also be made air super jumps by pressing down up or down up forward or by tapping the direction quickly. Air dashing as soon as you leave the ground is referred to as an instant air dash, which is a very valuable movement technique. There are various ways you can execute this. The first one is by pressing up forward and then returning to neutral and pressing forward. In this game, pressing a direction and A plus B is a shortcut for dashes, so you can execute instant air dashes simply by pressing up forward and then rolling to forward and pressing A plus B. What's important is that you can use all your air movement options in the same jump and with the order you prefer. Some characters have additional jumps or dashes available. For example, Crescent Moon Aoko has two air dashes and two air jumps available, and she can use all of them with no restrictions. Finally, you should be aware some characters have moves that let them alter their jump trajectories like dive kicks, fast falls, command air dashes, and moves that may stop or conserve momentum. Getting used to all of your character's movement options is very important. 
In many games, jumping is a very limiting action that leaves you with few available options, but this is not the case in this game. After all this, you may be led to think being in the air has no risks. Of course, this is not true, and there are multiple threats to look out for when you are in the air. First of all, getting counter hit while in the air leads to a launch state and the impossibility to tech until you touch the ground, leaving you open to big damage. This, coupled with the fact that most grounded normals are air unblockable, makes successful anti-air attempts very rewarding. Since air counter hits launch, even trading is usually a good thing, since you will be able to get a combo follow-up anyway. Even moves with very low damage can be good anti-airs for this very reason. As long as you get the counter hit, you will be able to convert from them. For this reason, it's not rare to see 5A used as an anti-air. Some moves have clash frames. This means they will be able to absorb one hit during a certain part of the animation. This makes them very useful as anti-airs, but beware of multi-hitting moves. Another universal way of anti-airing is shield. If the opponent becomes predictable with his jump in attacks, you can just shield them and counter-attack. The options on shield vary from moon to moon. With full moon you'll usually want to cancel into a shield counter, an invincible attack that will launch on hit. Each moon characters automatically activate a shield counter upon successful shield. The only exception is uh, shielding a projectile, where you have to activate the counter manually with uh, the F moon input if you want to activate it. C moon can only cancel their shields into either a normal or a special move. Note that to cancel the shield into a normal move you have to time it pretty strictly. If you just hold the shield you will only be able to cancel it into a special. There is also quite a few special moves which are air unblockable. When you're learning a character, you should be sure to check out which one of his moves are air unblockable and which one aren't. As you can see, there are many different ways to deal with characters in the air when you are on the ground. Still, you'll usually want to meet your opponent in the air rather than stay on the ground, waiting for him to jump at you. Jump-ins usually have very good hitboxes and the movement options in the air make it easy to bait anti-air attempts. Even on block you will be at disadvantage because then the opponent will be able to start his pressure game, which is very strong in Melty Blood. Counter hitting the opponent when you meet him with an air to air still gives you the possibility to convert into a full combo like ground to air attacks. Usually, a very good air-to-air -air move is Jumping A. As I've said before, Jumping C attacks usually have a very good hitboxes, so challenging them when they're out is very risky. Instead, you can read the opponent trying to go for them and counter-hit the startup with a Jumping A, which is much faster. If you get a counter-hit, you'll be able to combo off of it. Other than that, moves that have a good horizontal reach 
and are relatively fast are good to use in air-to-air -air situations. Shield can still be used in the air and it works exactly as the ground version. Finally, raw air throws have a yellow glow to them and they let you combo afterwards. They are good for situations where the opponent is being defensive in the air or just moving around not expecting you to meet him. In conclusion, you should get familiar with all of the game's universal movement options. Moving around the screen will feel very good once you do. In neutral, you will want to be in the air much more than other games. Keeping in mind what movement options have already been used and which ones are still available is very important, both for correctly anti-airing and not falling for the opponents and the airs. The air-to-air -air game is more complex than other games too, for the same reasons. Try watching videos on MelteDB and spotting the things I've talked about in this video and try to understand why the players did what they did. And of course, as always, play a lot and try to incorporate all this information in your play. This is the end of this episode. I hope you have found this useful. Please look forward to future videos.